What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from San Diego, California. Let's do it. That's right, everybody. San Diego is considered one of the finest cities in all of America with a population of 1.3 million people and having some of the best weather in all of the country. The activities in this travel guide take around five to seven days to do. You can do them in three days if you want to go fast. So here we are starting out in Balboa Park. This is an area where they have multiple different museums, including the zoo. We're going to show you around here what's here. I I like the Museum of Man. Well, actually, now it's called the Museum of Us, I believe. But we're going to go over there and show you that old building. It's from the San Diego Exposition of 1915. And as we get started here, I want to remind you guys that there's always timestamps below in the description so you guys can bounce around the video to place to place. So check that below. We visited San Diego in early February, and the weather was in the low 60s the whole time with sunny skies. So the good news is we're here in February, which is actually 50% off museums in San Diego. It's called Museum Month. We're right outside the Museum of Us, formerly known as Museum of Man, as I said previously. So we're gonna go in there and see if we can get 50% off, which is basically two for one. So in order to redeem that two for one, you actually have to go to a QR code like this or the website. You can go on Google and research that. Once you go in there, they give you uh, QR codes and tell you all the 40 museums across San Diego. So we got into the Museum of Us for $19 for two people. San Diego, as with the rest of California, does have higher prices than the rest of the country. Also, the taxes tend to be higher, so anytime you get a chance to save some money by going online and booking ahead of time or getting a museum pass, that's always an extra perk. This Museum of Us really is a museum for anthropology. Here's a monument to commemorate the person who founded California in 1542. You can see his name was Juan Rodriguez Carrillo. We're actually going to go to Carrillo Monument a little later in the film. Balboa Park in and of itself is free, but there are many different museums that you can explore here and a botanical garden which we will be showing you around, although it was closed and you'll see that coming up. But next up, we're going to head over towards the Japanese Botanical Garden and show you what it looks like to walk in between there. Again, walking around the park is totally free. The entrance fee here is $14 without the museum pass, but with the museum pass, it's obviously half. There are benefits if you're a student, senior, or active military, but again, go online before you arrive if you have questions about that. And because of San Diego's incredible climate, this Japanese garden is one of the best in the country. And there's so many museums here, including the Museum of Photographic Art, the Railroad Museum, and we're going to go look at some more museums just on the outside. Lots of museums in the Balboa Park area. And if you want to learn a bit more about San Diego, you can come over here to the History Center. As with many of the cities on the West Coast, San Diego is a new city, just barely over 100 years old. And in this museum, they give you 100 years of history from San Diego. And now that you've got a really good idea of what to expect when you arrive in Balboa Park, where the museums are, what do you guys say we show you around towards the zoo? There are many different fountains here in Balboa Park, so I hope you like fountains. And behind me, you can see the Jewel of San Diego right now is under renovation. That's actually the San Diego Botanical Garden. It is a very old structure, so it did need some repair. Along with the Science Center, this one here, the Natural History Museum of San Diego, one of my favorite museums in all of Balboa Park. I do recommend going in there. And as we head over to the world famous San Diego Zoo, we're gonna go through the Spanish Village here. It's an art center. Let's go take a walk. The first Europeans to arrive in San Diego came from Spain in the 1500s, so there is a Spanish influence. It is also important to note that before the Europeans arrived here, the Native Americans were living here and in Balboa Park it was considered a sacred place to them. So this whole area is a very precious piece of land. Here in the Spanish village you'll find a lot of art, also minerals and gems. San Diego is very popular for minerals and gems as you'll see when we explore around the old town. That's one thing about California and San Diego in general. Really expensive. I mean, $5 for 16 ounces of bottled water. <laughs> so 
we've made it to the San Diego Zoo. It is $69 per ticket, but if you go online, you can find out ways to get savings. I'm a veteran, so I got 10% off, $63 per ticket, but still, let's go check out the zoo. It may be high in price, but it is definitely one of the best zoos in the country. As you will see when we go around, the exhibits are quite amazing. The San Diego Zoo is also partnered with the Safari Park up towards the north, so they do take advantage of the amazing climate for the animals while here. That's part of the reason why this is such a great zoo. Also, I wanna take a moment to remind you guys, if you check in the description, you can also find other videos from our channel about California and even the San Diego area. And you can see they do have a cable car to take you from one end of the park to the other. That really saves your feet. They also do have a shuttle bus that goes around. They have two different ones. The cable car is free and so are the shuttle buses. If you want the hop on hop off bus, make sure you get the kangaroo route. San Diego Zoo is very kid friendly, so the little ones will enjoy this place. Some of the animals you can expect to see while here are going to be gorillas. They also have other primates and apes. They have African elephants and Asian elephants, lions, tigers, polar bears, many different animals that you'll expect to see here. Some of the best exhibits though are going to include the baboons. They really did hook the baboons up at this park. Also, I really enjoyed the koala exhibit. Some of the animals that were missing from this park that I was hoping to see was the panda. I guess the panda program had stopped and they had to return the loaned animals back to their native land, as they put it. I would assume they returned them to China, but they still do have the panda area. It's just a bit deceiving because when you're down there, you think you're going to see the giant panda and no, he's not there. They do have really big condors here, so they have the aviaries, but I would say the aviary I saw here is incredible, and they call that the Rocks of Africa. All right, from the San Diego Zoo, now we're gonna head downtown to the Embarcadero. All right, we're down here at the Embarcadero. Right here we have the Maritime Museum where you can go on board the submarines right here. One is a Russian South sub, American sub, and then they have the Star of India. For those of you who are into old seafaring stories or being a mariner, something along those lines, this Maritime Museum might just be for you. For me, the coolest part was seeing the contrast between the American submarine and the Russian submarine. Also, they do have tours that go around San Diego Harbor from here, so that might be something you're also interested in. And the Star of India. And while down here at the Embarcadero, you can actually grab a bite to eat, which is what we're gonna do now. The area we're at is actually called the port side, but the restaurant is Brigantine Seafood and Oyster Bar, which is funny because we got a Caesar salad and a burger, although they do have everything else for seafood here. And there is a look at one of those ferries or harbor tours that you can take around San Diego Harbor, right here along Port Side Pier, which is actually right next to the cruise port terminal. And if you come to San Diego and you expect to catch a cruise ship, you'll do that right here in the Embarcadero, right next to Portside Pier. But look at that big ship right here in the Embarcadero of downtown San Diego. It's definitely worth coming down to the Embarcadero. My only concern would be parking, so keep that in mind. Maybe taking an Uber isn't such a bad idea after all. Barcadero here, you can actually get on one of these hop on hop off buses. It's a trolley, it'll take you all around San Diego. And you can also get the ferry to Coronado from here, but that hop on hop off bus does go to Coronado, keep that in mind. Yeah, and here we have the USS Midway Museum. You can actually go on board this old naval relic. And on the flight deck of the Midway, they have pretty much every aircraft from post-World War II through Vietnam era up on deck there. And out front, they have the Navy sailor kissing the nurse, which is one of the only statues like that in the country. I believe there's three, don't quote me on that. But then you go down there a little further and you'll find the Bob Hope Memorial. 
Here we are at Seaport Village. We're going to go inside and see what's going on in here. Seaport Village is about a five to ten minute walk from the Embarcadero or the USS Midway, I would say. But down there, you're going to find restaurants, you're going to find cafes right there on the water, especially on a great day like this. This is a place you want to be. This here San Diego waterfront actually backs right up to downtown. There's also a convention center just past the area of the Seaport Village. So you can really walk this waterfront, but I would recommend getting one of those bird scooters or maybe even a bicycle and just cruising up and down here and you can really enjoy yourself. It also seems like downtown San Diego continues to upgrade and modernize. They are having many different construction sites. So they are doing a lot of building, which is good because San Diego downtown for many years has needed a facelift and some modernization with some of the buildings. And from what I've seen, everything has enhanced its charm right here on the San Diego waterfront. So great jobs to the city of San Diego. One of those new structures is this concert venue. So the Ratty Shell is actually brought to you by the San Diego Symphony, the Port of San Diego, and the California Coastal Commission. That's what made this place come alive. Come here during a concert and you're gonna enjoy yourself with the cool coastal breeze coming right over Coronado Island. Obviously on the day we were here, there was no concert, but there should have been, just kidding. It is right next to the convention center, so I'd imagine they will do some stuff in coordination with conventions. Now we're going on the Coronado Ferry. It's uh, seven dollars one way per person. Now there is two different ferry ports over here in downtown. One over here by the convention center and the other one is going to be over by the Embarcadero. The one that we took off out of was down here by the convention center and it literally took about five minutes to get to Coronado Island from there. Coronado Island. We're going to show you around Hotel Del Coronado and some of the beach. And again, it was a gorgeous day, so walking around was no problem whatsoever. Although I will say once we got down to the beach in Coronado, it was a bit breezy, which kicked up some sand, but they do have some things in place that might be useful for you, like these geodesic domes right there on the beach, which you will see coming up. But the interesting thing about the Hotel Del Coronado is it was one of the finest resorts on the West Coast, in particular in San Diego. So it is a historical monument down here. And as we arrive here at the beach, there is a look at those geodesic domes that you can sit in that protects you from the sand blasting while you hang out with your friends. Now, when it comes to hanging out in Coronado, whether or not you need to come all the way over here or if you should stay over here, I would say it's one of the more expensive sides of San Diego. It's also further away from everything. There is a long bridge that you have to take to get out here that does get traffic jams, especially during rush hour. But when you're here, it is a very relaxing, calm, cool, mellow vibe. Uh, not too much nightlife, that's for sure. But if you're looking for a rental or a stay here where you do get to just kind of relax without the hustle and bustle while still being in San Diego, then Coronado might be perfect for you, but you're gonna pay premium pricing. And what we'll do now is we'll actually take you down Orange Avenue, which is the main thoroughfare going right through the middle of the island here. There is also a Navy base called Naval Air Station North Island right here that you're going to share some of the real estate with. Uh, it does connect to 4th Street on Orange Avenue and that is the bridge that goes over San Diego Harbor. It's quite the interesting bridge. It's uh, quite tall. Orange Avenue has many different restaurants. Most of them seem to be either Italian or Mexican, some Asian mixed in. Also, they're going to have many homes right here, so lots of homes right along Orange Avenue that you could probably rent for Airbnb or possibly even live in. There is a park right there also, which is a nice little refuge from the hustle and bustle 
of Coronado Island, even though it is more relaxing, it still does get a rush hour because of the Navy base. And because of that rush hour, I prefer to take that ferry for $7 each way and just Uber it out of downtown. That's the way I like to roll. I don't like traffic jams when I'm driving. And here we are at Mission Beach, beautiful Mission Beach boardwalk. Now, if you love people, Mission Beach is where you're going to do some people watching. Lots of people come down here in the summertime, but even in the wintertime, people are still gonna be hanging out right there on the beach. It's also important to note that it is right next to Pacific Beach. And if you go across the waterway, you'll be in Ocean Beach. Both of those we will be showing you later on. And again, you can check the timestamps below if you wanna bounce around the video to any particular moment as we continue to show you around Mission Beach. There is a theme park here for those of you who have kids. It's called Belmont Park. Also, for those of you on a date, you may want to consider going to Belmont Park. There's this small wooden roller coaster that people like. There's also other rides and you can try to win your girlfriend or your kids a teddy bear at one of these games. Now, one thing that San Diego is truly infamous for all across the coastline from north to south is going to be sunsets. You can see right here, there is fire in the sky and it really does light up. People come out here to do their sun worship and just kind of watch the sun go down from the boardwalk, really amazing sights. And one of the most popular places for people to get vacation rentals is going to be right here in Mission Beach. Also, if you go inland a bit, you will see there's Mission Bay. All right, now we're in Little Italy. This is a great place to come in the evenings if you guys want some Italian food. So dinner up and down here, many different restaurants. Let's take a look. And of all the areas in San Diego that I would say are really on the up and up, Little Italy stands out to me as a place that just keeps getting better and better like a fine wine. Uh, so Little Italy is a place that you might want to not overlook when you arrive in San Diego. The best time to visit Little Italy is going to be in the evening time. Also, the morning time has good food down here, lunch also. But I would say it really lights up in a nice way in the evening time and you feel like you are in Italy at times. With that being said, the cuisine that you can expect to find here is obviously going to be Italian. Now, in downtown San Diego, there are other areas which we will be showing you next. One of those is the gas lamps. You know what's interesting? Little Italy is on India Street. And here we are at the historic part of downtown. It's called the Gas Lamp Quarter. We're going to walk around. The Gas Lamp would probably have to be one of two main areas for partying, the other one being Pacific Beach. But this is where a lot of people go if they want to let their hair down. Uh, they have a lot of restaurants down here, so the time to come to the gas lamp is the evening. They do have some of the big chain hotels down here also, including the Hard Rock. But gas lamp is a place that has not really changed over the last few years. In fact, I would say it hasn't gotten any better. It probably has gotten a little less better, if you know what I'm saying, not to put down the gas lamp, but I remember the gas lamp used to be awesome and it doesn't seem like it's as good as it used to be. Some of the locals say there is a bit of a challenge with the homeless population being high down here and they do have some crime associated with that activity, especially with people who are using or just getting drunk down here and causing a ruckus. All right, we've made it to La Jolla Cove. We're gonna walk around and show you what's going on around here. La Jolla Cove is essentially the coastal area in La Jolla. La Jolla being the absolute high-end district of San Diego and most of Southern California. You've gotta be having the big bucks if you're gonna live here. And if you wanna stay here, it's gonna be about $200 to $300 a night on the low end, and the high end can go all the way up to $1,000 a night at some of the hotels here. We stopped in to get some breakfast, but I do like coming down here to La Jolla Cove because they've got animals like seals, sea lions, birds, really a cool place to hang out. People like to do kayaking down here and they have a big sea cave also. So definitely add this area of La Jolla to your list. Again, parking can be a bit of a problem here. So if you can, Uber it in. When the tide is up, you will see sea lions and seals surfing, but when the tide is low, you can do some tide pooling.
down here in La Jolla Cove, you can find a wide variety of different birds, seals, and sea lions. The difference between a seal and a sea lion is sea lions bark. Photographers like to come down here with their really expensive cameras and take pictures of the birds, the seals, the sea lions. Sometimes there's an occasional shark sighting. People go out here and do scuba diving and they say they see sharks in the kelp forest. And when down in La Jolla Cove, you can actually go to La Jolla Cave. Let's go down there. The La Jolla Cave, I believe, is privately owned and they do charge to go down there. It is around $10 per person, give or take, depending on the season. Some prices can change. I will also say that it is open from nine to five, but be sure to check the dates and availability before you get there because sometimes it can be really crowded and there's a line that extends out the door. Going down is a lot easier than going up. Some people get winded on the way up, so they will ask you if you can handle a lot of stairs. I think it's a hundred stairs. So here we are at the Sunset Cliffs, obviously a great place to come at sunset. We're here in the early afternoon. Lots of surfers out here. Come out here during sunset though, you'll get beautiful orange and purple blue sky. I would say this is probably one of the best places for surfing. Uh, you're probably gonna wanna be more than just a beginner to do it here because the cliffs are a little bit rough. Uh, also, I would say the seas are a little bit higher out here in the Point Loma area because that's essentially where the sunset cliffs are. So we were here in the early morning hours. Obviously there is no sunrise because it faces west and the sunset doesn't happen until later in the evening. So the only two things that, that leaves you with is either surfing or hiking when you're at Sunset Cliffs before sunset. So if you guys are looking for a unique hike in Point Loma, check out Sunset Cliffs area. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head north to another hiking area right there on the coast, which I consider to be the best place to go if you're looking for hiking trails along the coast in all of San Diego. But as the signs say, look out for rattlesnakes. That's not a joke either. All right, so here we are at Torrey Pines State Park. We're gonna walk around here and show you guys what's going on out here. And just to touch back on the rattlesnake subject, yes, they are here, but don't let that stop you from coming out here. One of the big things that this area is known for is Torrey Pines Golf Course. There is a North Course and a South Course. That is really popular up here because they play the US Open, but this natural preserve area is incredible. It is a great hike to just get out in nature. And if you go below where the beach is, you can walk that whole beach area all the way to Black's Beach. They have a glider port there, which we'll be showing you a little later on. But we did the hike from the top of the hill on down the cliffs into the beach area. And no, I did not see any rattlesnakes there, so that's a good thing. Just keep in mind with the rattlesnakes, they show up in the summertime. They don't come out when it's cold, so it might be a little bit too cold for them up until March and then from March until around October, you may see them, but then again, they're scared of you just as much as you're scared of them. Yeah, so after a long hike down the windy forested area, we arrive here at the beach. If I go that way, that's Black Beach. If I go over here, this is uh, the parking lot. So it's up to you what you wanna do when you get to this point. But over there, you can actually walk the beach all the way to La Jolla to the Scripps Pier. And the reason I keep mentioning Black's Beach because it's considered one of the best beaches in San Diego, but it is clothing optional, so keep that in mind if you have any sort of hang-ups about that. So every time I come here, I always see this uh, type of whale, whale or uh, porpoise. I think it's a pilot whale. It's a black dolphin type uh, fish. We just saw some emerge right over here. We're gonna see if they come back up. Yeah, just this whole coastline around La Jolla all the way up to Torrey Pines, it's teeming with marine wildlife, truly. 
And for those of you who really want an adrenaline rush, why don't you head over to the Torrey Pines Glider Port. It's in between this natural preserve and also Scripps Pier. It's up there on the cliffs above Black's Beach. And like I said, if you're really looking for a adrenaline rush, this is where you need to go. So we're here at the paragliding port here in Torrey Pines. But if you're not the type to do it yourself, you can also go up here, hang out, enjoy the views and watch people take off from the cliffs and parachute off into the great unknown. All right, we've arrived at Pacific Beach. Right behind me is the pier, and over here is the beach. Right now we've arrived at Old Town San Diego. Let's go take a look. So here in Old Town San Diego, they have Ghost Town Tours, $40 per person. But what we're gonna do now is actually head to Fiesta de Reyes. They got a restaurant and some saloons. They got Barra Barra restaurant here. So if you like Mexican food, Old Town has many different restaurants, variety, but we're gonna go into Fiesta de Reyes. I've heard churros, but Oreo churros, that's on the next level. Yeah, out here in Old Town, San Diego, they have Whaley's House, which is actually considered the most haunted house in America. how they make traditional tortillas. All right guys, we've arrived at SeaWorld. Let's do it. Now before you jump to conclusions about SeaWorld, they do have a wildlife conservation program that is worth taking note of. 
So don't jump to conclusions about SeaWorld so fast. Yes, I know there were some movies made about it, but here they do show you how to preserve the wildlife and take care of the natural marine ecology around you. So yes, you're gonna see some shows, you're gonna see Shamu, you're gonna see orcas that are in tanks, but I like to see the animals happy and it seemed like most of the animals I saw were happy. While at SeaWorld, you can expect to see the Shamu show, a dolphin show. They also have some seal or sea lion shows. Some of the most impressive things I saw here were the walruses and the wild Arctic exhibit is really amazing with the beluga whales. So if you get there, check out the wild Arctic exhibit for sure. Uh, Shark Reef Encounter used to be the big ticket in town. I don't know if it's that amazing because it seems like there's a lot more of those kind of uh, shark tubes around the world at these aquariums. Another thing that was really impressive here was the roller coasters. They have about three really fast roller coasters. So I decided to get a rice taco bowl right here from uh, SeaWorld with jalapenos and beef. And just wanted to put it out there that the water ride, like the log ride and the rapids ride was closed because it was winter. So I'd assume those open up in the summertime. Before you arrive, do be sure to check the timing on the shows because that can throw you off depending on what time you show up, whether the seating is going to be available. It seemed like every show runs about three to four hour, but also the show for the dolphins was about 15 minutes and I think the Shamu show is around 15 to 20 minutes also. the jaw of a megalodon, that big jaw right there. They say the shark could have reached up to a size of 45 feet. That's as big as a bus. Look at the jaw on that thing. They say it feasted on whales. Yeah, so as you can see, SeaWorld is full of action. The ticket price here is around $85 if you buy it online ahead of time. The lowest I saw it was $69 on some travel websites. But if you go to the actual park and try to buy the ticket, I think it's $105 per person without any of the discounts. So try to get your ticket before you arrive and try and find a discount code before you get there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually head over to Point Loma again. This time we're going to go out to the top of the hill where the Cabrillo Monument is. Where we're at now is actually the Cabrillo National Park. And if you look right behind me, you can see North Island and San Diego Harbor. Back in the 1500s, Cabrillo discovered San Diego Harbor. He was sent by a viceroy from Spain. They were actually ported in Guatemala at Iztapa, and they sailed up here to San Diego Harbor for the viceroy. If you look right behind me right here, you can see the USS Iwo Jima, which is an amphibious assault ship coming in 
are going out actually from San Diego Harbor. The Cabrillo National Monument is essentially the oldest place in San Diego because this is where the landing happened back in the 1500s by Cabrillo and his crew. Uh, this whole area really has a lot of history when you come up here, so be ready to soak it all in. If you want to talk about how long it took to get from downtown all the way out here to Cabrillo Monument back in the early 1900s, it would have taken a full day to go that 18 mile stretch but nowadays it only takes you about 18 minutes. And the lighthouse and associated history is very interesting. So spend some time around the lighthouse. I found it to be very interesting how they were building these lighthouses all up and down the California coast. And this was one of the first ones. There's lots of different things going on here at the Cabrillo National Monument, including bunkers from World War II where they were actually bunkering down from the Japanese. And here we are at the Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial, right up here on the top of the mountain. Great 360 degree views, downtown San Diego and La Jolla. Let's show you around. So up above Old Town, there's another area you may want to check out. It's called Heritage Park. This is where they have old Victorian style homes. This is where the rich and wealthy lived in San Diego, back above the Old Town area, but really a nice area. Here in Old Town, they have a station for the trolley. I call it more of a tram, but it's really a train. It'll take you to downtown. It'll take you all around. They have the blue line here, and they also have the green line.
Yeah, the MTS is the Metropolitan Transit System. So you can really ride that all across San Diego Metro, including to the border with San Isidro, right there with Tijuana. Next up, we're gonna head over to Ocean Beach, another popular area to explore and get some food, hang out. They do have a big fishing pier here, although it seems to be closed. It hasn't been open for some time, but we'll show you around Ocean Beach anyway, also known as OB. All right, guys, we are now at the San Diego Santa Fe station, which is essentially an Amtrak hub. And we're gonna take the Amtrak all the way up to Los Angeles. So if you're new to this channel, you should consider subscribing if you like videos like this. Also, stay tuned for our Los Angeles travel guide and things to do. We got a lot of California content coming still. So stand by for that and we'll see you on the next one and click these links if you want to watch those videos right now.